Hello and welcome. So this is um, the Yokoverse timeline. Yay! This is a timeline that I've been working on for many, many years, ever since the Dragon Guard 3 uh, Complete Guide released their own version somewhat similar to this, although I've added a ton of information since then. Um, that uh, the Dragon Guard 3 Complete Guide was released on the same day as Dragon Guard 3 was in Japan, so that was uh, December 19, 2013, I think? Is that right? <laughs> Please check. Um, so this just shows a, a ton of work that I've done on it. Um, this, I try to keep it updated as much as I possibly can. So this is the uh, July 28th version of the timeline. So it adds a bunch of stuff like where near automata fits into things when things occur, um, where kind of uh, the novellas fit into things. Um, where the games and, and comics and stuff all fit into uh, the overall timeline. But what's kind of confusing is that um, we've got a ton of different separate timelines going on within this single uh, flowchart. So I think a lot of people are getting a little bit confused about that. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about how I set this up and what it all means. So basically this was originally made uh, for Dragon Guard 3 in the Dragon Guard uh, what, uh, 3 complete guide, I guess. And what that was, oh, it was meant to um, help readers understand where uh, the 1.3 novella sit, sat in the stuff. Um, so it was this guy here. So to help people understand where Yoko's new 1.3 uh, novella series fit into the whole overall um, timeline, they created this uh, timeline. But um, I've added a ton of stuff into this, so it's it looks a lot different than what was actually printed in the, the book. So uh, let's take a look. So basically we've got the Cataclysm or whatever the big event in the year two, uh, 856, 856. So that's the main point of where things kind of occurred. This is the, the time where um, the flower, magic, dragons, and the cathedral city just appeared in the world. We don't know really anything before this besides just our normal history of our world um, as it is today in real life. <laughs> so just imagine in this year there's some weird ship shit happening <laughs> from a different timeline wherever we don't really know. A timeline universe uh, we don't really know. Um, there is a difference between those terms, so whether it's a, a different universe or a different timeline, those mean different things. So you have to be really careful about the, the terminology that you use, but we don't know any uh, more details about that. So the first thing that we know that occurred after that was the uh, Utahime 5 manga. This is a manga. Uh, there were three volumes uh, printed. And uh, that leads into Dragon Guard 3. So this is the main um, game. So as you can see, this is the legend that I've got down here. This is the same as what was printed in the uh, Dragon Guard 3 complete guide. I think I added stage play though. I think that's um, I think they only had these four things listed. So I added the stage play. Because there were, um, of course, you know, the Yoruha stage plays. And plus, I also included the Kimishini uh, stage play in there as well. So, um, let's see. So, from Dragon Guard 3, the game has four endings. A, B, C, and D. And from each of these endings creates a separate timeline. But we only see the continuation of uh, the A ending 
which connects into Yoko's uh, Shini Taru Aka manga series with Brother One. And that continues into the novella series 1.3. This is kind of like a reimagining. What? How do you say that? <laughs> Revision. I'm not getting even. <laughs> I'm tired. Leave me alone. Um, a revisioning of uh, Dragon Guard 1. Basically, it gives you like different information, like how characters might be different, how they might um, react differently to different uh, situations and stuff. So I wrote all about that. I'm not explaining it well right now. Excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so this novella, we only see it um, talked about through um, its first ending, sort of. Like, it tells us, they give us, um, Yoko gives us another kind of flow chart for the endings, kind of similar to uh, Dragon Guard 1 or uh, Dragon Guard 3 or even Nier. Um, I have those all on my website as well, so you can check those out later. Um, what else? Um, so there are actually five endings to the, the novella, but uh, we only witness this one here. So the A ending is the world of dragons, and it finishes with the land of dragons, whatever that means. Um, but um, what's a little bit confusing, and I was really kind of, I, I didn't really know how I wanted to put this into the actual timeline, but um, I wanted to raise this bit up. That's why it has like a shadow in the background, so that you can kind of sort of understand that it has nothing to do with these dates above it. Uh, because generally with the lines um, going down like this, that will tell you basically what time, what year these events take place. But these, this, this whole box here is kind of separate from all of that. That's why I wanted to add this um, kind of shadow behind it so that you know that it doesn't um, relate to these dates above it. So, hi. So that is the DoD 1.3. Uh, novella. So what's interesting going back to Dragon Guard 3 is that um, going into Dragon Guard 1, um, none of the endings in the actual game A, B, C, or D connect directly into DOD 1. Um, that is left to the actual novel. The story side novel is what this stands for. So Dragon Guard 3 story side novel. This was released sometime after the game was released. Maybe I forget exactly when it was released, but it was after the game. So, um, and this was written in retrospect, of course. So Yoko was kind of thinking about how he wanted to actually connect Dragon Guard 3 more closely to Dragon Guard 1. So that was his uh, his chance to do that. Why he didn't just add uh, ending E in the game? See, that's what I usually call this ending. I usually call that novel ending E. So I know some people don't like me to use that terminology since it wasn't part of the game, but yeah. Jenaino, that's all right, don't you think? It's it's ending E. It's all right. <laughs> so that connects into uh, Dragon Guard One. So going on, um, a lot of people were t also talking about. Um, I know I'm skipping ahead, but um, Dragon Guard Two, how it, it kind of fits into its own timeline here. Um, don't read too much into that. Uh, that's mostly because Yoko had not a whole lot to do with Dragon Guard 2. Uh, he wasn't the director, he was just uh, doing menial stuff for it um, on the side. So he really can't talk about it in retrospect whatsoever because that is delving into somebody else's uh, term, uh, somebody else's, I don't know, area <laughs> of expertise so that's not he didn't have anything to do with it so he can't talk about it now it's kind of disrespectful to do that <laughs> i can't talk leave me alone so um i remember i played dragon guard 2 many many years ago when it when it first came out in japan and i really don't remember the difference between the endings the three endings but um this is the way they connected it in the 
in the Drakengard 3 uh, complete guide. But I remember people saying, no, that's not right. It's actually connecting into A or whatever. I think it was A, right? I don't know. I could be totally remembering wrong. But um, how it connects into the novella Garden of Light, basically. Um, I do remember this was inaccurate, but that's what the book had listed. So I never changed it. So that's why I still have it listed as this. Hi. Oh, hi, Nisa. Hi, Nisa. Hi. Nisa's talking. So going back to Drakengard 1, um, the game actually has five endings. So this is the main ending that connects further into Nier. Now, um, all of these guys, these are from the World Inside book, correct? Yes, that's what this says. The novellas, The Song of a 14-Year-Old, The Garden of Light, and The Fire of Prometheus can be found in the World Inside book, included with the Drakengard 10 anniversary box set. So it's that huge um, Inside World, World Inside book um, that came with the 10th anniversary box set. So... Um, so that's what all of these novellas basically are. Um, the Lost World, where was that printed? The Lost World, uh, I'm, man, I'm totally blanking right now. The Lost World was in a different book, wasn't it? I forget what book that was in. <laughs> oh, that was in, um, eh? Grimoire Near, wasn't it? I think. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not doing this very well today. Anyway, going on. So we did this. So what um, kind of the meaning of this red stuff is written down here. So I've got the huge asterisk and question marks in red. So please look at this footnote here. Um, Yoko's... Kimishini Tamo Koto Nakure, Thou Shalt Not Die manga and stage play might be connected to the overall Yokoverse, but nothing has been officially stated yet. It may be a prequel to Nier with further connection into Nier Automata. Now, um, I really wanted to include this in the timeline because there are so many things, so many um, kind of callbacks, a lot of curious things that connect into the overall yoga verse that is within the story so i've written a ton about it um, about all the the unique things that are seemingly um, connecting to drakengard or even near so if this were to actually um, be part of the overall yoko verse this is where i would put it so it's the after the main um, June 12 event in 2003. Um, this is kind of the aftermath of um, kind of experimenting with uh, Maso and trying to create weapons out of kids, basically. Um, so this is uh, the new stage play. Uh, the Kimishini Zero Kai. It's the second version, and that actually had two different endings. One, uh, the red end was the original ending from the previous stage play, and the black end was a new ending, which allowed two previous characters who had died to survive. So that's very interesting. Um, the characters um, Kuchiba and Hakuji actually survive in this ending. Um, the red end, just about everybody dies. <laughs> All but four characters die in that one. Um, personally, I like that one much better than this, but just the fact that those two characters are still alive, I'm really, really curious about that. So, um, the stage play is, takes place about three years before the, um, the actual manga. So the manga is still ongoing, we don't know how that's going to end yet. But I believe it just entered into one of the main uh, storylines that might be the end. I don't think it's 
uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't want it to end, but I kind of think it's gearing up for the end. <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, so it just continues on. These are the novellas um, toward the end. And then we go into Nier. And how Nier has the, the four endings, A, B, C, and D. Uh, this is another novella, novella, and here I have, um, Grimoire Near. Oh, yeah, yeah, so this is where I wrote it. Um, The Lost World is, um, uh, a story, a novella that takes place three years after ending E. I'm sorry, after ending D. <laughs> I called this ending E a lot of the time, so, um, so that's why I get kind of confused. And also, that's that's why I kind of did these, like, bullets and stuff here. Um, I, I don't know. I should probably erase this part here. Because it does take place after D. I think I would revise this. I would take that out. Because uh, it does take place after ending D. Anyway, going on. So then it goes into... Um, this is a drama CD. A track on the drama CD, the the near drama CD. I wrote about that um, in detail. I translated that that track, so you can check that out later. Then it goes into um, Fire Prometheus, which leads into um, the whole fourteenth machine war. Which, yeah, it 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 deals with these uh, this timeline here, these these years. Um, what's, I really don't like how I set this up now. Um, it's been bothering me for a long time, but the, the file that I made for this, I kind of flattened everything. <laughs> so these things aren't separate layers anymore. So it's really irritating to, to work on any of this anymore. It's just so old and, you know, just imagine all of this shit, almost every single line, every text is a separate layer <laughs> and you you can tell in places where it gets kind of janky like here you know you can tell that line is kind of weird and see it it's all janky it, it annoys me greatly so i, I want to fix it but anyway um so this is where i included the yoraha um, stage plays and stuff in here so this, um, the, the original stage play takes place in 11941. <laughs> so there are four different versions so far. It's really hard to see, but, um, whoa. So it's version 1.0, 1 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3a. Those are all dealing with the Pearl Harbor descent mission. Uh, the next one, the newest stage play, actually, um, to be written, I guess you could say, um, is the Yorha Boys version 1.0. There might be more in the future, who knows. But um, this takes place in 11942. Des. <laughs> um, and then later in 11945 is actually the beginning of the game. So all of these things take place before that. Um, this is an interesting short novella that was printed in the, uh, the Near Orchestra concert pamphlet. Um, I haven't translated it. It's like one page. Um, I could probably translate that sometime I have time. Sometime I have time. <laughs> but anyway. Does that kind of make sense of how I, how I put this together? Um, you can see kind of like three main timelines here but there's way more than three going on here so we have every single one of these endings is a separate timeline it creates a new timeline so um to see where games connect you have to look here so for example dragon guard 3 connects through this way into dragon guard 1 you have to go down here from the dragon guard 3 story side uh novel it goes into ending E, which connects directly into near, and near ending D with extension into the Lost World novella, the Space War, 
uh, Fire Prometheus, all of these go through those and it connects to Automata. This, um, the 14th Machine War is basically the time of Yoruha. Of course, um, Yoruha was in development and stuff a little bit before this, um, but basically the main, this is the main chunk of the war. So uh, the whole issue with the original prototype number nine and his uh, rewriting of Project Yoruha, that happened two years before this date. So this is just uh, illustrating the main part of uh, that machine war. This is what they, they labeled the dates for that because it, it, um, it's an uh, illusion of actual World War II, which took place in 1939 to 1945. It's a direct connection to real world happenings. So, hi. I think that's maybe it. Yes, okay. Well, I'm gonna stop rambling for now. Uh, I don't know if this is going to help anyone or if it's going to confuse you even more. <laughs> But probably the latter, and I can't speak, so please forgive me. <laughs> Pity upon my <mine> soul. <laughs> Hi. All right. So until next time, have a good one. Bye bye.